hear some powerful testimonies of God's grace in this room. Never forget <laughs> his benefits.
What a beautiful name that is. What a beautiful name that is. Matter of fact, I'm changing the list right now. Because <laughs> we're singing that song. Because I'm... <laughs> Just, I don't know if you can find it, if you can find it, whatever. That song right now is going to cap this, this time with God. What a beautiful name. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold him down. He's won the victory. Church, don't ever wait for your, your situation to match what it's supposed to be before you give him what he's due. <laughs> you praise him and he brings the victory. You praise him and he brings the breakthrough. You praise him and he brings the deliverance. You praise him and he brings the provision. to sing this song because I, he has no rival. He has no equal. He reigns above. We celebrate you. You were the word in the beginning. One with
no other name under heaven that man can be saved. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess to the glory of God the Father. Lord, help us to restore the awe, majesty, and wonder of your name. Let us lift high the banner of the name of Jesus. Let us no longer be ashamed. Let us no longer sit in hiding for fear of offense. But God, let us lift high the banner the name of Jesus. Lord, let us speak the name of Jesus everywhere we go, in every venue, every place. God, let that name reign supreme, Lord. Lord, your word says, your word promises us that the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the water covers the seas. So, Lord, How many of us want to see the name of Jesus yes. put back in its rightful place? Can no other name. Fast, no other name. What you got, Shane? Can I share something real fast? Yes. I was listening to a, um, a testimony from a man who had a, a dream or a vision. I can't remember which it is. It's kind of the same thing, I guess, um, when he had it. But he was transported into heaven. And he saw this old man. He said he was old, but he didn't seem old. He seemed vibrant and full of life, but he, he appeared old. He had white hair and everything. And he was telling, he was sitting down telling a multitude of people um, a story about the first man and woman in a garden and how they sinned and fell. And then how he watched God talk to Adam and tell him that he was going to have to die. But his testimony was so powerful because he saw God explaining it to Adam and telling Adam, listen, now you're going to have to be separated from me and you're going to have to die. And he said, but don't worry. It's going to be okay because I would rather lay down and die than spend eternity without you. And then the old man said, and that is exactly what Jesus did. And when he said that, the multitude of people in heaven created such a roar of worship and praise because of that one simple fact that God would rather die than spend eternity without us. And that it's exactly what he did. He chose to die rather than to spend eternity without us. He could have chosen to just let us go, but he didn't. And he would have been justified in doing so, but mercy triumphs <laughs> over judgment. You know, Shane, if we can grasp, each of us grasp that very fact that he did not want to be without us, that he gave up his life. We would have no problem praising, worshiping, witnessing, because that is the good news, isn't it, Brother Mike? that he did not want to leave us in our condition. So he gave his life and he shed his blood so that he could set at captive, set at liberty all who were oppressed and, ab and, and, and abused. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 
as we close, just as we're just winding down, it's very appropriate if you just want to have a few outbursts of praise just before God. And you just want to tell him audibly, Lord, how thankful you are for him, of what he's done for you. If you just look over your life, surely you've got a testimony of what God has been faithful to you. And see, we are to make the sound of his praises heard. We are to make his praises known. So I'm going to put my mic down so I don't drown you out.
I just want to see him exalted. <laughs> I just want to see his glory poured out. I just want to see him magnified to the degree that the world can see him manifest. So saints, <laughs> we must decrease so that he may increase. sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. That your glory may be seen. Oh, that your glory may be seen. thank you for your blood. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us, that whispers. Thank you, Lord, for the down payment of what is to come. Receive our praise and our worship. Be glorified, be exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be seen all over the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you go hug a few people and
All right, well, we're going to go on. I told Tinker, I said I wanted to run, but I was afraid I was going to fall down. So I said, no, nah, I better not do that. I almost fell several times. I just, phew. what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a name. And I can only imagine what heaven's going to be like. It's going to be so powerful, we're going to have to have new bodies. Because there's no way. I know what I felt just now. I, if I'm in the presence of Jesus like this, thunk, <laughs> down I'm going. <laughs> and I ain't coming back up. So a new body I'm going to need if I'm going to be around him. Amen. Well, as, as far as announcements go, um, next Sunday you're going to be preached to by uh, Pastor Jeannie. We'll be preaching next Sunday morning. And uh, so get ready for that. It's always a good good sermon. It's always good words. It's always great illustrations. Um, and so y'all make sure you're here for that. Um, by the way, we are live today, so Angela and Glenn are in Tacoma, Washington, watching us. So we say, hey, Glenn, hey, Angela, we love you and miss you. See you next week, hopefully. Um, and God knows who else is watching. We praise God for that. I, I, I love technology. I think it's a great thing um, that we're able to do this, and, and uh, hopefully God will use it for his glory as he's used I mean, social media is bad in a lot of ways, but it's also very good for sharing the gospel. So um just depends on who's using it. <laughs> Amen. I don't I don't think I have anything other than that. Um we're gonna pray again. We're gonna have a men's meeting on July first. We canceled it yesterday because they had the they had the uh digital cocaine seminar going on here with Brad Huddleston. So July the 1st, men, we're going to be right here uh, cooking and eating breakfast and, and fellowshipping together. And, and uh, I need to talk to you something about that later on, Tinker. Um, uh, let's see, nothing, nothing else going on. Next Friday night fire is July 14th. I have asked Kevin Persinger. Calvary United, Calvary, I keep starting to say Calvary United Methodist. It's Calvary Assembly of God in Stanton. And so I'm waiting to hear from him. And he'll be our next speaker. And so that's all, I, that's all I've got right now. Uh, Bible study is always going on, uh, except for the Wednesday before Friday night fire. So we're here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. We're still in the book of John. And so we'd love to have you. Uh, Tinker, you got anything you want to share before we go on the offering? He's talking to his brother. You got anything, Tinker, you want to share? By the way, we're doing missions offering today as well, so prepare your hearts for that as well. Go ahead. Good morning. His name is Jesus. Luke... Luke 7, 1 starts, it says, when Jesus, Jesus has finished saying all these in the hearing of people, he entered Capitan. There a centurion servant whose, whom his master valued highly was sick and was about to die. The Sicilian heard that Jesus was, and sent his elders of the Jewish to him, of Jew to him, asking him to come to heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they plead earnestly to him. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the Sicilian sent his friend to him. Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. This is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But you said the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, 
with soldiers under me. I told this one go, and he goes. And I tell that one come, and he comes. And I say to my servants, do this, and, he'll, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have found no such great faith even in Israel. And the man who had been sent returned home to find his servant well. A lot of times we think we got to see Jesus for him to work. The truth is we just got to believe that he's already at work. Thank you. Hey Amen. Jason Carey, could you come? And uh, Carrie, you have the one with the regular offering. Jason, you have the missions. Those whom which you've been giving to all these months will be here July the 9th. John and Jenny and the family will be here with their new daughter that they got from China. And so they're, they're actually going to be here next week. They'll be preaching at Growing Together next Sunday. So they'll be they'll be here in the, in the in the valley, so we get to see them July the ninth. So um, I know that they are very thankful for our faithfulness for these few years that we've been giving uh, to them and sending them money every month. And so uh, I just wanted to thank you again for all that you guys do and your hearts to give. It's been such a blessing. Jason's going to be taking up the missions, and Carrie's going to have the regular offering. So I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to get our regular tithe and offering, and then we'll get the missions afterwards. Father, I thank you, and I praise you, Lord. You're such a faithful God. We thank you, Lord. Uh, we just believe, Lord God, that you've given us great harvest from the seeds that we've sown and that you will continue to do so because you're a faithful God. And so we thank you, Lord, uh, that you give us the power to give. You give us the substance to give. Uh, our jobs uh, are, are not our source. You are. And you bless the places that employ us to be able to give us what we need. So we thank you, Lord, that you're in control and that we have no fear that you're going to come through and you always have. And so we thank you for these gifts. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that it would bless not only reality, but beyond reality and into the valley and into the world. And we thank you, Lord, that you've already done so through this house. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold your hand up if you're giving just general giving today. Because you're on your tippy toes. <laughs> He wants to be as tall as me. He's over here telling me, I'm almost as tall as you. Amen. He is. All right, Jason, you ready to go get the missions offering? If you're going to get the missions offering, look, make sure you see hands raised up. And we thank you. Now. Before we get into the sermon, men, it's our day to shine. Amen. So if every man in this place, whether you're, well, you're a boy, but we're going, we got enough to go around, I believe. So all the gentlemen in the room, we want you to get up and we want you to come and take a gift. Come on. Don't be shy. I like the verse uh, where Timothy Paul Paul writes. He says, "Though you may have had." 10,000 instructors, you have had few fathers. Uh, fathers have such an important role, more than we're probably given by the world. Um, 
nowadays, you know, kids can be, kids can be produced without a father. Um, there's so many single parent, you know, so many wives raising kids without men. And our society, I believe, suffers because of it. So, um, not that the ladies are inadequate in any way, but God knew what he was doing when he said, when he said that let man and the woman join together as one. They'll be one flesh and that their children will be blessed. So we celebrate you men. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being men. Thank you for the influence you've had. Again, happy Father's Day. And I thank God for being the ultimate father because my earthly one was absent. Uh, and instead of shame and anger, I learned that God is unlimited in how or who he can bless me with. I'll tell just a little of my testimony. I was never, never knew my, I never knew my father, never even lived with him. Um, he struggled with alcoholism throughout his life. And just, we just never connected. And, uh. But God, through athletics, sent me a father, a father who I spent the majority of my teenage years in his home. And I learned what family was and I learned what love was, unconditional love. And this man wasn't a Christian at the time that, um, that I was over at his house. I mean, we would play baseball and he would – he would have the Pepsis and the Cokes in the cooler right along the, the you know, the, the other stuff uh, that you go, that you have in coolers uh, right along with it. And, but he, he always treated us, he always treated me with love. The first time I went over his house, he said, uh, would you like something to eat? I'm like, sure. And he said, well, it's in the cabinet. I'm not going to get it for you. So... And because of this man, I can never, ever, ever have a racist bone in my body because this man was white. And I learned, I learned that you love people for who they are, not what they look like. And that God is unlimited, as I said earlier, in how he can bless you and who he can bless you with. If you, stick, if you, if you get fixated on God has to love me from this one source, then you're going to miss out on all the other sources that God can bring things to you. So uh, I know because I know this time of year, you know, some, a lot of times Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas are hard when, when loved ones have gone or maybe you didn't have the greatest relationship with your mom or your dad, and it's hard at this time of the year. But I just want to remind you that God, again, is unlimited and how he can bless you and how he can bring people into your life that will be that person if you're able to receive it. If you're saying, I'll receive it, just bring it to me. And that's what I, that's what I did. And I was blessed. And that man is Jerry Beard. And I'm hoping he gets to watch this video some today because I always every year rem try to remember to bless him because he played such a pivotal role in my life as a young teenager who could have went in any kind of direction. But I spent time in his, and so that's why I always, athletics will never, never, will never be a problem with me. I love athletics. God can use them, and he has. And also, I want to give a shout out today to my spiritual dad, Bishop Tony Miller, uh, who has such great godly character and unconditional love that every person, every person feels that when they meet him. And so he's a great example to follow. And, and I, I told him often, I said, I want to be like you when I grow up. So uh, 
I just want to thank him, you know, for what he's meant to my life. And and um, as I begin this time of mentorship over the next year, it's going to even mean even more. And I'm so looking forward to it and that starting in July to uh, even connect even greater. So um, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Today I'm talking about, uh, I just called it fatherly advice. I usually don't do thematic sermons. I usually don't. You know, I'll just go by what the Spirit is saying. But I asked, I asked the Lord, and 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 this is where He sent me. Uh, I'm going to be in Proverbs three, and also I'm going to be in Proverbs four. So if you want to turn, I'm going to start with verse three, and I'm going to preach through verse eight, and then I'm going to flip over to Proverbs four as well. All right. First of all, I want to say, you know, know know that you have a good father. He's a good, good father. We didn't sing that today. But you need to know that you're loved by him and that his desire for you is freedom and joy and that he has a plan for your life. And that plan is to bless you and to make you a blessing. Actually, I'm going to start at verse 1. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. I love Proverbs because it's, it's a father talking to his son. Um. You'll notice that verse 1 and 2, it talks about length of days and long life. You know, that sounds a whole lot like, you know, honor your mother and father so that your days will be long on this earth. And so today, you know, as we, we do have kids in the house, but we all, you know, we all still need to remember to, to, to honor. Uh, if, if our parents are gone, our parents are gone, we, we still honor God. We honor God in the same way. Because we want to have health and we want to live alone. Amen? The temptation to rebel is stronger than it's ever been. And Jesus said this in, in Matthew 25. He said, because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many has grown cold. So we have to not forget what we've been taught, not forget the law of God, not to, not forget. Don't forget the law of your parents. If you had good, godly parents, don't forget what they taught you. Don't forget their commands because there's going to be length of days and long life for you and peace. They're going to add to you. Let not mercy or truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor. And esteem, high esteem in the sight of God and man. Mercy and truth, integrity and compassion, justice and forgiveness. Those are standards that we need to see return. Not just to the world, but the love has grown cold in the church too. Amen. So we need to see those things return. Let mercy and truth not forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. You want high esteem? You want favor with God and man? That's how you get it. It's still possible to have high esteem from men and from God. I know the world has gotten crazy, and I know they've gotten even more, you know, rebellious and and 
and evil toward us as Christians, but I believe we can walk in such a way that they are going to, they will respect you even if they don't like your message. That's possible. They call Jesus the friend of sinners. The places Jesus hung out, most church people would go. They invited him, and he went because he had favor with God and man. How are we going to reach them unless we're, we know how to treat them with mercy and truth, with integrity and compassion, with justice and forgiveness? Blessed are you when they persecute you. Don't curse them. Don't curse them. Why? Because at, at some point, the coals of fire are going to rest on their head for how they treated you. When you walk in love toward them, and I know it's, it's tough. That's tough. <laughs> Everything in us wants to, wants to lash back out. But man, if we walk in love and we walk in the love of God toward them, we can see their lives turn. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Trust is the harvest of the seeds of walking by faith and seeing God be faithful over and over and over. Trusting God is, is, is because we put him to the test over and over and we've seen him come through. That's how we can trust in the Lord. I believe having faith is one thing and trust is another. Trust is a trust is to me is that next level from faith. Faith is tough enough. But man, when we get to that place of trust where we know because he's demonstrated over and over again to our in our lives. Because we have testimony, we can trust him because we remember what he did back then. And if he did it then, surely he can do it right now. So I can have faith now because I trust what he did before. Because he's proven himself faithful, we don't lean on our own understanding. We acknowledge him as the one who has greater wisdom, has greater knowledge, and has greater power. When we lean on our understanding, we're very, very limited. Even though we think we're very smart, we're not. <laughs> we're not anywhere close to as smart as he is. As high as the heavens are from the earth, so are his ways above our ways, his thoughts above our thoughts. Don't be wise in your own eyes. But fear the Lord. And depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Earthly wisdom is sensual. This way of life that God asks us to live, that's health to our body and it's refreshment to our bones. So this is just good fatherly advice. If you want to live the blessed life, if you want to have a life of blessing, the fear of the Lord is a good place to start. Hallelujah. Turn over to verse chapter 4. I'm going to start with verse 20, although I could read the whole thing because it's awesome. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. 
for they are life to those who find them and health to all your flesh. That sounds like what we just read, didn't it? <laughs> Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Like I said, that's repetitive, almost verbatim, what he said in chapter 3. Don't we know as parents that we spend the most of our lives repeating things to our kids over and over and over again? They're like, okay, God. My kids are like, Dad, I, we've heard, we know, we know. <laughs> it's not important that you know. It's important that you, you walk it out. That's what I'm getting at. That's why I keep saying it over and over. And over and over again. Just like God says things to us over and over and over and over again. Keep or guard your heart. Hmm. Do not allow it to be conformed to the philosophies of this world. It says also in Romans what twelve two my verse my favorite verse, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove good acceptable and perfect will of God that you may be able to prove it out that you may be able to let others see that God's will is good acceptable and perfect as they look at your life because your life is not conformed to what theirs is. You don't live by the philosophies of what they live by. You don't react the way they react. You don't think the way they think. You don't walk the way they walk. The sensual world is continually pumping its agenda through every form of media available. Those of y'all at the digital cocaine seminar yesterday heard plenty of that. If we don't guard our hearts, which starts with guarding our minds, because what comes into the mind, it eventually it's deposited into the heart. Then we will find ourselves thinking and acting like the world. We'll find ourselves with the same attitudes, the same reactions to things, and we're supposed to be different. Because he set that power on Pentecost for us to be a witness. Not for us to witness, for us to be a witness. Big difference. Your life should speak before your mouth ever opens. <laughs> Amen? Your mouth should speak only after your life has been seen. Matter of fact, they should come to you and say, man, we see this and all this stuff. You know, what, what is it? What is it about you? What is it about you? That's what I want to see happen in my life. Amen. The Spirit of God and the Word of God are our only defense to the world pumping its agenda into us. We must... We must keep ourselves full of the Spirit. We must keep ourselves full of the Word. We must guard against those things because it's so subtle how those things just creep in. And finally, in verse 20, and we're in verse 23, it says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. The issues of your life are not external. Here's where I want to spend a little bit of time. Your issues don't come from what people have done to you. Your issues come from within. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Pastor that I follow posted this this morning, Stephen Furtick. He said, We often assume that God's presence will fix all of our problems. 
But sometimes God's presence is all about fixing your perspective to give you a new way to see your problems. Because God always wants to fix you before he fixed your mess. He always wants to get you to a place through the mess before he takes the mess away. He has a purpose that's greater than just snapping his fingers and fixing your problem. He wants to fix you. He wants you to have fruit that comes from enduring while you're waiting on the promises of God. He's not a sadist. He doesn't want to see you go through pain, but he works all things together for good for those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And if we're ever going to be those people that Jesus talked about, if we're ever going to bless and not curse those who persecute us, then we, we've got to, we need some thicker skin, I believe. We need to learn to endure our little things that we're going through. If we're ever going to stand out there and talk for him and represent him and take the hate leashed, unleashed back at us and take it the way Jesus took it. Jesus didn't curse them back. He blessed them. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. I don't know about you, but I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not above lashing back. But I don't want to be that way forever. I want God to change me. I want that. I want, man, I want to so confuse them when they're looking for this reaction and they get another one. I want them to go, man, I threw my best at him. I gave him the business. I gave him the worst I said the most horrible things about him, and he did nothing but he did nothing but bless me. Doesn't that sound like Jesus? <laughs> I say this all the time because I, you know, I, I've loved them too. But you know, in America, we, you know, we love vigilante movies. We love it when they get theirs in the end. But that's not Bible. <laughs> Get them, get them. They deserve that. <laughs> That's not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> We're supposed to bless those who persecute us. We're supposed to do good to those who do evil unto us so that we can heap coals of fire on their head. If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. If he's hungry, give him something to eat. Wow. Talk about changing the world. If we just do that, if we just did those two things, man, what an impact we'd make. So again, some fatherly advice. You want long life. You want to have an impact in the world. Guard your heart with all diligence because the issues aren't what's coming against you from the outside. It's what's being stirred up inside. God wants to get to what's being stirred on the inside and get rid of it. He wants to heal hearts so that we respond like Jesus, so that we live like Jesus. Because if we weren't able to live like Jesus and walk like Jesus, then he would have never told us we could. He would have never said greater works you're going to do because I go to my father if it wasn't possible. And it is, but how do we get there? got to guard our hearts. We've got to let mercy and truth never forsake us. We've got to bind them. We've got to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding, not react the way we would react, but say, Lord, what should I do? What would you do? How can you leave me in this situation to get to speak to that person? I think the biggest thing, and I'm getting, I'm closing. Um, I think the biggest thing is that we've got to, we've got to all be comfortable with dying to ourselves, and I think that's the greatest hurdle we have is dying to ourselves. Because when we die to ourselves, then what happens to us is we don't even worry about what happens to us because we're in God's hands. However they treated us, I mean. 
think about this, and I thought about this early in the week, Brother Mike. Jesus said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, <laughs> despising the shame. The joy set before him was us. He willingly went through that because he saw us on the other side of being. We were the joy that was set before him, that he was going to rescue us, that he was going to create a people, a new people all unto himself. We who were not a people are now going to be the people of God because Jesus was obedient for the joy set before him. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. That verse really rocked me last week for the joy set before him. That was a, his love for you and I was enough for him to say, let this cup pass, Father. If, if it's, if it's, if it be your will, let it pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So we've been honoring him all morning in every song we sang because what he's done for us and how he's made us a people. And now you and I are called to represent him. I like that word, represent. We are to re-present. We are to present him again. We are to present him again to the world. So we've got a daunting task ahead of us. We've got, I've got, I'll preach to me. I'll turn around and say it to me. I won't say we. I've got to die to Terrence. I've got to not allow things that have gotten under my skin to get under my skin. I've got to respond like Jesus would respond. I've got to be willing to say, you know what? None of that's important. That person sitting across from me, their life, is important. And it's it's difficult, but it's got to be done. Am I saying it's easy? I'm not. Go ahead.
set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Amen. Amen. See, that's why she's so smart. <laughs> but exactly what she's saying, what she's saying is exactly right, you know. And, you know, we have to reckon ourselves to be dead. So we we have to reckon that person dead. And, and every time those impulses come, we have to tell ourselves that that person is dead, no longer lives. Mike, go ahead. <laughs> wow. Wow. <sighs> Man. So are we. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs>
well, I'm going to pray and release us to go spend time with our families today and uh, for the church to gather in other places. Uh, that's right. You guys are blessed. Be blessed and be a blessing everywhere you go. Represent Christ. Let him be seen. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, but it's Christ who lives within us. The life we now live, Lord, we live by faith in the Son of God who gave his life for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done again. And Lord, help us to fix our gaze and keep it upward. And to get ready to be unveiled. That the earth will see what you're like and what heaven is like. And we thank you, Lord, that that harvest will be brought in. Because the laborers are being made ready, even as we speak. And we just thank you, Lord, as we look forward to your coming as we look forward to that glorious day. And we just thank you, Lord, that we have you even now. We have your spirit. But one day we'll see you face to face. In your name, your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.